Hi, welcome along to another video. This time I'm going to take a more in-depth look at the drone test that was carried out in the UK in November 2019. Links to the information shown are in the information section of this video. It's kind of important to mention to start with that there are currently two different types of weather modification technologies utilising drones unmanned aerial vehicles UAVs. They are being used for cloud seeding such as silver iodide cloud seeding in the United States is one example and then they are also being used for what we are going to talk about now which is the electric charge method or electrical stimulation of clouds for atmospheric moisture redistribution purposes. Using an electrical charge to stimulate clouds etc is by no means a new concept experiments were being done in 1951 which we know from the Smithsonian report where the author talks about thermodynamic effects and to make weather modification effective an artificial heating should occur in the lower part of the cloud and below the cloud base we've seen the progression into the late 1980s with the Eastland patent for ionospheric heaters, sky heaters in simple terms, also known as heart facilities, which as you know exist in China, Australia, India, Peru, Brazil, Gakona, Alaska, and also near Aberystwyth in Wales in the United Kingdom. And then we step back 20 years, it's 1965-1966, where we know the electrical discharge method was already being experimented with. Obviously this was ground-based, not drone-based. It was part of a three-year experiment, artificial modification of atmospheric space charge. So the ground-based cable was energised to a maximum voltage of 50 kV DC direct current by a power supply located at the dam. A corona effect discharge of ions which acted as a nucleation agent was produced. The idea of the experiments were to increase precipitation, weather modification, electrically charging the ions in the atmosphere, stimulating, manipulating clouds, the atmosphere, moisture, effectively moisture redistribution. So back up to 2021, January 2021, paper published online, demonstration of a remotely piloted atmospheric measurement and charge release platform for geoengineering. And from the abstract, artificial charge release is an unexplored potential geoengineering technique for modifying fogs, clouds and rainfall. I hope that helps people correlate that there is no difference between geoengineering and weather modification it's one and the same thing it's weather modification it's all weather modification doesn't matter what name is given to it so the flights were performed at the university of bristol's fenswood farm long ashton united kingdom two flights were conducted on the 29th of november 2019 this is a good point to remember that this is a proof of concept test. It was to show that the drone emitting an electrical charge could be picked up at ground level. Did the drone work and do what it was supposed to do? And the answer is yes, which then of course will probably progress from the test that has happened with one drone to tests with more drones and probably more drones until we have a swarm of drones. What happens next should become clear soon. So where do we stand now? I've spoken to both Bath and Reading universities. As mentioned, the test took place in Bristol. The outcome of those conversations were that there were no public notifications made, but it was also deemed that that was not necessary due to it being a proof of concept test and not an actual attempt to change the weather. No doubt, if there are future experiments planned, there will be public notifications and the relevant government departments will be notified as well, such as DEFRA, DEC, 
the Civil Contingencies Committee and Health and Safety Executive. But from the UK public's point of view, the most important thing will be for them to be notified should anyone be making an attempt to change the weather during a climate crisis where extreme weather events are being experienced. Now with regard to the University of Bath and their obligations to notify the public etc. They have put a freedom of information request in on my behalf, I did not ask for it, to see what documents are held on that subject. But obviously in the future any UK experiments that will be on the University of Reading and of course the project lead to make sure all public notifications happen. I have asked about future UK experiments but I haven't received an answer yet. I'll let you know as soon as I do as they have been quite chatty up till I asked that. In the meantime look after yourselves, take care and see you next time.